So let's start building our quiz app. At the first step, we define a model for our question. So each question is defined in a class and it has three properties. The first property is going to be the question itself, the type of string. The second property is list of the options. So as you see, each question has four options. So we define a list of options, each, each which is a string. And lastly, we have a correct answer index. So this is going to be the index of the correct answer. We also need to provide a constructor for our class and set all the properties as required. At the next step, let's define our questions. So I have already done that. I have prepared nine questions beforehand. You can write your own questions or if you want to copy this, I will put a link in the description to the GitHub repository for this project. So let's define our UI for the quiz screen. At the first step, let's get the question. And this is first question out of our questions array. At the next step, we define a padding with a column inside. We have a padding of 24 from all the sides and inside which we have a column. So the first child is a text that is providing our questions here. This is save now and we see our question appears. As the second property, we provide a list view builder. We use a list view because we have four options. So inside the list view, we have our item builder and we have an item count that is question.options.lint we also have a string grab we have to set it to true because we are using a list view dot builder inside a column widget so this is gonna cause UI problems so lastly let's return a gesture detector to make our options clickable and inside our gesture detector we have an answer card that is right now mostly hard coded so if we now hit save we see that we have all our options here. So in this step, I'm going to teach you how to create a question card. It is going to be pretty complex. So I have written you an algorithm. Uh, this card has three different states. First of all, if no option is chosen, we have no styling and all the buttons are enabled. But if we choose an option, we again have two different states. If you have picked the correct option, uh, only and only the correct option is going to be marked as green and all other options are marked by default but if you have picked the wrong answer our answer is going to be marked as red and the correct option is going to be marked as green so let's define them as you see we have a class called answer card inside which we have five different properties we get the question we get if the option is selected we get the index of correct answer, we get the index of selected answer, and we get the current index. So let's go to the UI. Here we have a padding, and our padding is vertical 10. So right now you see there's nothing in the UI, but let's go one more step. We define two properties. The first one is, is correct answer. So here we check if the answer that we have picked is correct one. And we can do that by saying if current index is equal to the current correct answer index. And what if we have picked the wrong answer? And we can determine that by saying if it is not the correct answer and this item is selected. So now let's define a container with a height of 70. This is the height of our options. We also give it a padding of 16 from all the sides. And let's give it a decoration. By default, the color is set to white and we have a border radius of 10. So now if we hit save, you see we have our items. But let's give some more properties. Let's give it a border. And inside the border we say, if it is the correct answer, give it a border of green. And if it is the wrong answer, give it a border of red. Otherwise, give it a border of color white 24. So now let's hit save and lastly let's define what is inside these borders so I, I define a row inside which we have an expanded widget inside which we have a text with a font size of 16 so now let's hit save and you see this is the basic UI for our answer card so let's finalize our design right now we are only showing the design for when the user has picked an option but 
What if the user has not yet chosen an option? So none of the items should be highlighted. For that purpose, we're gonna use a check mark. Here we say, if the selected answer index is not equal to the null, should this highlighted design? But if it is null, should this container that has no design? So let's hit save now. But nothing will be changed because we have already picked an option. We also can add a button here to show if the item is correct or incorrect. So for that purpose, after our expanded widget, we show a size box and also an icon. So if it is a correct answer, we build an icon. For the correct option, if it is wrong, we build a wrong icon. So now let's build these buttons. Each of them is going to be a widget function returning a circle avatar with a radius and a background color. For the correct option, we have color green and for the wrong option, we have a color of red. So now let's hit save and you see that our UI is complete. So right now, if I click on any of these options, you see that nothing happens because we have not yet defined the logic. So let's define the logic here. At the first step, I define the selected answer index. This is gonna hold the index of our, the chosen option. We also have a question index that is holding the index of the current question and then a score. So let's define our pick answer method. Inside which, we first of all put our value inside the selected index. This value is the value of the item that we have chosen. So we put it inside our selected index. So it is no longer null and then we pick our question and then check if the answer that we have picked is the same as the correct answer if it is true we add one to the score and set state we also need to get the question inside the build method and also we define a boolean flag that is checking if it is the last question or not inside our gesture detector we check if our selected answer index is equal to the null this determines whether we have already chosen an option or not. If it is equal to the null, it means we have not yet picked any option. We put our pick answer method and pass the index. And if it is not equal to the null, we pass null. And all that it means is that if we have already picked an option, we put null inside our on tab to disable the button. So let's hit save. And now you see that I can pick any of these options. And if I pick the wrong option, it is also gonna show me the correct option. So let's define a method that helps us to go to the next question. This is called go to next question. Inside which first of all, we check if we are on the last question. And if we are not, we add one to the index and set the selected answer to the null. And as the last step, we put a set state. So below the list view.builder, we are checking if we are on the last question and if we are, I'm going to define a finish button inside the on press. I have a method that navigates to the result screen. But if we are not on the last question, I'm going to create the next button. Here we first of all check if the selected answer index is not null. So if we have already choose an answer, we can go to the next question. But otherwise, this button is going to be null. So let's hit save now. And if we do that, right now you see that we can pick an answer and also go to the next question. So as the last step, we're going to build the result screen. This is going to be an easy one. And first of all, we define a column here. Inside which we have a size box and a text. If we now hit save, you see, this is our text. Under that, we have a stack. We use a stack to put two widgets on top of each other. And the first widget is going to be a circular progress indicator. This is going to show the percentage of our score. If we now hit save, you see, this is our percentage. The value is going to be a score divided by the number of questions. In this case, it's nine. Below that, we have a column with two texts. The first text is going to be our score. That is exactly one. And the second text is going to display the percentage of our score. So that was pretty much everything about this project. See you in another one.